Hey everybody, so I just wanted to let you guys know that there was another stream that happened between this episode and the last episode, uh, but it was a very short stream and a stream in which I didn't really do a whole heck of a lot and uh, it wasn't really uh, long enough and we didn't really do enough stuff to make a whole YouTube video out of. And so I figured what I'd do is uh, just kind of real quick walk you through some of the things that I did in that stream to get you caught up and ready for, uh, for this episode here. So the first thing that we did is we crafted up a sound muffler because at the very end of the last episode, we finally got down our Orchid Endium and boy, was this thing loud. Uh, thankfully, now we have this sound muffler here from X Utilities 2. It's fairly easy to make. It is a one note block, which is just redstone and wood, and then one piece of wool, which of course we make with four string. So uh, fairly easy and it does nicely dampen the sound of the older Orchid here, uh, which is very nice indeed. We also crafted up a couple of upgrades for our storage drawers, specifically the ones that are getting resources from the hopping bonsai pots. So those being uh, the wormwood logs, the six, the apples, and then the wormwood leaves and samplings. I made each one a void upgrade. These are a little expensive when it comes to obsidian, but we did have quite a lot from tearing down those end dragon pillars. And uh, essentially one upgrade base, which is just a trim and some six with eight obsidian gets you a void upgrade uh, and so now if we fill any of these drawers which uh, we have done for example with the sticks here all of the excess sticks are just going to be deleted instead of backing up the whole system and stopping it from making uh, more wood for our mana and more apples for our food and our power so uh, that's all good we did also craft up um, a iron upgrade for each one of these uh, you can take out the void upgrades to make it not delete extra but you can't take out the iron upgrades once you have more than the default amount of items in the drawer, if that makes sense. Uh, like by default, these drawers here can hold uh, 2,048 of any given item. Um, but when you add the iron upgrade, and these upgrades don't have to go in in any particular order. You can put in um, any upgrade you like. I chose the iron upgrade simply because it's fairly easy to make and we have a large amount of iron, uh, but this increases the storage to four times the base value. And so now instead of being able to hold 2048, we'll be able to hold whatever, you know, 2048 multiplied by four is. Uh, that's how much we can now store. I guess actually it's 8,192 because that's how many uh, this one seems to be uh, to be stuck at here. And uh, yeah, you can put up to seven of these upgrades in uh, each drawer. Uh, different upgrades do different amounts. For example, if you go with uh, like an emerald upgrade, uh, you can go all the way up to 32 times the base value. And uh, you can do that seven times to get a really crazy insane drawer that can hold a ton of items. Uh, but for now, we can hold up to 8,192 and we're deleting excess on top of that. Other than that, the rest of the stream was mostly spent rebuilding more of the nether with the terrain generator uh, to try and get enough uh, blaze rods to make the blaze powder required for the blast furnace. I did put down a, uh, a new waystone in the nether. Previously, we were going to the acid plains biome to get to our nether portal, which was just a little cumbersome. So we made a new one uh, that now takes us directly to the roof of the nether. And uh, the reason why it takes us to the roof as opposed to somewhere in the nether is that uh, it's a lot easier to build more of the nether from the roof because you can just put down uh, the terrain scanner and usually the culinary generator, uh, begin building a chunk and you don't have to worry about being like engulfed by the chunk. You don't have to worry about lava spawning in and killing you or anything like that. Uh, you can just move it from chunk to chunk to chunk and uh, put down more of the nether. We did fight quite a few blazes. Uh, you can see, thankfully, we did find uh, quite a hefty chunk of a fortress fairly close by to where we, uh, where we started generating chunks. And uh, so the blazes do spawn quite regularly down here. And I think we killed, you know, maybe seven, eight, nine of them in the uh, in the stream there. So we do have a fair few uh, blaze rods ready to go, given that we have looting on our uh, on our sword. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. We basically upgraded our storage drawers, put down a sound muffler, and then spent like 45 minutes regenerating nether chunks. Wasn't really enough for me to warrant a, a whole YouTube episode on it, especially with some of the shorter videos uh, that have been going out recently. I figured you guys would want another long video. And speaking of you guys, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. YouTube tells me that 40% of the people who watched the last video are not subscribed. And so uh, if you like the videos and you want to see more in the future, do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, without further ado, here is episode nine of Levitated. One thing that has been recommended to me, chat, quite a lot, up until this point, and that I've not done yet, is um, people have recommended that I craft up a shulker box and carry it around with me. And I think that's probably actually a good idea. So uh, the shulker boxes can be crafted with a chest and two uh, shulker shells. Right now we have three shulker shells, so we can do this. And my idea really, chat, is to have the shulker box basically for tools. Like in here, we've got a lot of stuff that it'd be nice to have on us, but that we don't really like need all of the time the same is true for my inventory you'll notice it's quite full of stuff that we want to have on us like our wrenches and our rod of the seas and our shears and you know our pestle and mortar and a watering can and the reservoir and the data model and the shield maybe there's a lot of stuff that it would be nice to have on us so we'd have to come back every time we need to get it but at the same time it's not stuff that we need to be carrying around like in our main inventory 
And so I think we're going to set up kind of like a little, basically toolbox that we're going to carry around with us here. Now, I'm not going to lie, chat. I have yet to use shulker boxes in this game, but I believe that they are essentially just chests that you can carry around, right? Upgrade your shulker box. How do you uh, upgrade a shulker box? Oh, I see. The iron chest mod adds the ability to upgrade your shulker box. Interesting. Okay, so if we uh, quickly grab this, I assume you can probably upgrade it like with items in it, but uh, if we get eight iron and we do something like this, I'm being told that I can upgrade this to a larger shulker box. I assume that we could, oh, we totally can. I assume we could even take it one step further, right? And make this into like a golden purple shulker box. And then presumably after that diamond. Yeah. How much gold do we have? We have 45. Again, we don't need a ton of space, honestly, if it's going to be like a little toolbox. We do have, I think, a little bit of gold ore lying around. Yeah, so we've got 34 more gold um, in this ore here once we process it. Um, you know what? Sure, let's go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's go ahead and upgrade that. It just gives us a nice amount of storage for uh, anything we do want to carry around with us going forward. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Perfect chat. All right. So yeah, we'll put most of the stuff that we're going to use occasionally, but not all the time. Uh, up and into here. I think the hatchet kind of belongs in that category. Uh, the keys and the end stone, they definitely do as well. I think I'll keep the mana tablet and the rod of the skies on me. Um, I think we use those fairly regularly, and so we don't need to uh, have like a separate chest for those. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And we can always add more uh, to that system, you know, as we go and uh, and as we make more stuff. Uh, but, but now that we have that taken care of, chat, um, I do believe that we should have enough blaze rods to get ourselves a blast furnace. We do indeed. We've got nine. So... We could, if we wanted to, just craft these down into blaze rods or into blaze powder because we do have enough blaze rods. But I think in the interest of efficiency, I do want to try and get this mechanical squeezer because that is going to allow us to not only get five blaze powder per blaze rod, but it's also going to mean that going forward, we don't have to do all of the bouncing um, on the squeezer that we've been doing up until now, which is going to be uh, just like a nice added side benefit as well. So um, if I go ahead and type in a mechanical uh, squeezer, what do we need for this? We need one diamond, one regular squeezer, one obsidian, and then two energy batteries. The energy batteries uh, sound more difficult than they are. They are basically just a lot of crystallized mineral chunks with some redstone. And as luck would have it, we do have uh, quite a lot. We've got 59 crystallized mineral chunks, which I think should be enough here. We only need two blocks. Oh, no, do we need four blocks? We need four blocks. That's also actually fine. One diamond, one obsidian, and then the squeezer, I think, is over in one of these chests it is two blocks of redstone one and two two energy batteries one and two and then boom a squeezer nice and we can go and add this to our line of machines over here and essentially going forward just put things actually into the squeezer um, as opposed to having to uh, you know to manually jump on them to get them to work i do think that right now uh, we are a little light on power which is where these uh, apples come in But I think that's going to work. Yeah. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it should get the job done. So I believe if we're going to make 27 blast brick, we need, uh, I think, nine blaze powder because you make the blast brick in lots of in uh, sets of three and we need 27 blast brick in a total. So uh, nine blaze powder should be enough, which with the squeezer is actually just two blaze rods, which is very nice indeed. There we go. Uh, the slightly harder part is going to be the uh, the netherrack and the clay. Uh, the netherrack shouldn't be an issue. We have 200 here, so let's go and get that uh, smelting up as well. I think I'll divvy it up across a few of these furnaces here just to make it a bit quicker. And we do, by the looks of it, also have to get some more uh, fuel for these, but that is fine. We should actually have quite a large amount of, uh, of wood now. We do indeed. Fantastic. So uh, I think for now that should be fine, actually. I think four stacks should get us there. There we go. We don't need a stack of nether brick, but uh, having extra I don't think is going to hurt. And then the only other thing that we need, chat, to make 27 blast brick here is uh, it's just some clay, right? We actually need uh, 27 or 36 even regular brick, which now that we have automated cobblestone really shouldn't be a problem. We can get a stack nice and easily. Uh, we can drop that stack in its entirety into the old uh, mana pool with the alchemy catalyst that should turn all of that cobblestone into sand. We can then go and, of course, use all that sand over here with the old clay conia. And hopefully it won't take us too long to get this going. It does appear that uh, our Clayconia is connected to an empty mana pool. I think right now it's connected to the same mana pool as the uh, the Orchid, which is probably what's causing the issues there. But we should be able to nice and easily kind of redirect it, I think, to here. 
I chose this one because this one has the al alchemy catalyst and this one's being used to make runes. I think right now this is the only mana pool not really being used for much. And so uh, it's kind of the perfect candidate for the uh, for the Clayconia. But yeah, getting 36 clay here, chat, should be uh, actually nice and easy. And it might not even, chat, be a bad idea to maybe try and automate this a little bit. I'm essentially thinking what we could probably do is uh, get like a block placer or a mechanical user and have that basically place the sand. And then if we use uh, the hopper hog that we have over here, we could, um, you know, automatically collect that. I think that's probably worth it. We do, of course, have this uh, very small quote unquote enderman farm <laughs> or ender pearl farm, I should say, uh, out here. But um, as quite a few people have pointed out, it's not really too useful. We do have 27 ender pearls, um, but it's not great, right? It's not... Uh, that good and we do have enough ender pearls right now while we're using them so i think for now what i'm going to do chat is i'm going to go ahead and grab this and uh, basically move it over to uh, the sand area essentially what i want to do is i want to put down a mechanical user that i could just put sand into and then have the the hopper hog collect that sand and put it into a storage drawer so that i don't have to manually place all the uh, the sand down whenever we want to get uh, get clear right so essentially just this guy set to uh, place block, right click. Uh, we will do, we'll do upper left slot only. I don't think we're gonna be doing that much, you know, clay making. And then uh, if we go ahead and get a draw, make sure there's some clay in there. I will lock that. And then at that point, all we have to do is put down the uh, the old hopper hook. Nice. And so uh, we should just be able to put, you know, as much sand as we like into there and then come back to uh, a reasonable amount of clay that we can then use for whatever it is that we want to use. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to make like another stack of, uh, of clay here just in case we need any more clay uh, going forward. And it also might not be a terrible idea, chat, for us to uh, potentially make more than one blast furnace. The blast furnace is rather slow. And uh, I think in an ideal world, we would have maybe a few of them to make steel quite quick, because I think we are going to need quite a bit of steel uh, going forward. And speaking of the blast furnace, uh, you may or may not have noticed that I've also rebuilt the uh, the coke oven over here because we do need charcoal in order to actually uh, run the blast furnace. Uh, the blast furnace will not run on uh, regular fuel, so charcoal is required there. But uh, we'll come back to that in just a second. For now, let's head on over to here. Let's grab all of our nether brick and then start replacing that nether brick with regular clay for regular brick. And... It shouldn't then, chat, take us too long to get that blast furnace. So I'm thinking what we might do, I might have to move that bla that coke oven, actually. I don't have to, but I think I will, because I'm thinking I might hook it up to the same line that has the, the analog crafter here, essentially automatically pumping wood in and making charcoal, and then we can auto pump that charcoal over into a, a blast furnace to make sure it always has uh, charcoal for when we need it. There should be a pipe right here. There is indeed. And we're just going to pull that up so that some of the wood goes over into the coke oven. And then of course, now that we have our brick, which I believe should be fully smelted, it is indeed, we should now have everything it takes, chat, to make our first blast furnace. And essentially all we're gonna do is we're gonna pump all of that uh, charcoal directly out of the coke oven and then over into the blast furnace. Uh, so we made 30, but uh, we only need 27, that's fine. Uh, let me grab one more transfer node. And then uh, the setup for this is exactly the same as it is for the coke oven. It is just a three by three multi-block. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again. And again. And much like the uh, coke oven, all we have to do then is right click with the old hammer. Like so. And there we go. We have a blast furnace. Nice. So uh, is this working as intended? It is indeed. We have a stack of wormwood there. Fantastic. So uh, if we do this and this, that should... Oh, you can't do that, chat. I completely forget every single time. If you want to automate the blast furnace, you have to make uh, improved blast brick. That's this thing here, the reinforced blast brick, which requires steel plating. It's not too difficult to do, honestly. We would have to get 27 steel and then plate that steel which uh, unfortunately cannot be done with our uh, simple presser that we've been using up until now, you know, the one that looks like a piston. So I think we are going to have to either make a metal press or a smeltery to get that going. We can't make the compactor yet because all of the machines from uh, thermal expansion require plastic, which we don't yet have, which requires oil, which requires um, a, uh, an oil pump and, and also a pressure chamber and all kinds of stuff that we don't have just yet. For now, though, we can uh, do this manually. We can put the, uh, the charcoal in and uh, put some iron in as well. 
Unfortunately, I do, th I do think it takes multiple pieces of charcoal per steel. Which means it might take us a little while, chat, to do this. It also does take a little while, just in general. You can see the progress bar in the top left there. It takes a long time, much like it does to make the, uh, you know, the charcoal. It takes a long time to make the steel here. And it does use, I think, maybe like four pieces of, of charcoal per piece of steel, which is less than ideal, honestly. Very much so less than ideal. Does that actually pull out? It does. Okay, perfect. So we do have charcoal which is good. We just can't automate it yet. Okay, yeah, so we are going to have to get 36 steel and turn that into 36 steel plates before we can actually improve it. Once we improve it, uh, the Blast Furnace gets input and output slots so you can automate it fairly easily. I think that is definitely something we're going to want to do with our first 36 pieces of steel um, because looking ahead, there are quite a few quests. Like this one here wants us to make the uh, excavator. This one here wants us to make a pump jack and... Uh, a lot of, and I think we also maybe need an arc furnace later on down the line as well. Um, a lot of these big multi blocks from immersive engineering do require quite a lot of steel, and so we are going to need quite a bit of that going forward. And uh, and so I definitely think that we want to invest in automating steel as soon as possible. Yes, yeah, so I think for now, chat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do something like this. Um, I will. I don't think that the charcoal is going to go back in to these connections, but just to be safe, I will uh, disconnect here, here, and here and then essentially i'm just gonna put like a storage drawer down to store up the charcoal so uh, we'll leave this running when we come back we should hopefully have you know quite a large amount of charcoal at which point we can then start manually putting that charcoal in and uh, getting a bunch of steel and then uh, hopefully use that steel to automate the uh, the blast furnace or make the improved blast furnace which we can then automate and then uh, hopefully get rid of that storage drawer uh, permanently uh, for now though i think this is working yeah just fine and uh, for now i do want to uh, kind of pivot over to uh, one of the other introductory quests in the soulless dimension quest line and that is this quest here the altar of life it says by combining some new materials found in the nether you are able to create an altar for resurrecting creatures though it doesn't work every time craft a summoning altar and then this leads on to nasty bacon it says zombie pigmen will no longer drop gold nuggets or ingers but they do drop a piece of rotten pork very rarely which can be used in the summoning ritual for pigs as well as rings in the sky uh, with the soul of a chicken you forged a ring that slows down your falling. With some proper upgrades, you might gain the ability to fly. So I believe the idea here is that we're going to craft an altar. We can then use that altar to craft a chicken wing ring, which is a fantastic name. Uh, that gives us the ability to kind of fall slowly. It's not quite flight. Um, after that, we get the uh, the free floating quest line, which wants us to craft the uh, ring of the levitating shulker, which gives us a little bit closer to flight. It gives us something more akin to a jetpack. And then right at the end, uh, we get the Holy Wings quest, which wants us to create um, an Angel Ring. Now, I think the Angel Ring might be a little far out of our craftability zone right now. It does require a Cursed Lasso and also a uh, Frugal or Flugal Tiara. And I'm actually not quite sure how you make the Flugal Tiara because the recipe for the Flugal Tiara seems to uh, require the Flugal Tiara. Oh, you have to go through. Oh, I see. There are like multiple. Oh, so we need the, uh, the Tiara with the Wings of a Phoenix which is made with the wings of a one-winged angel, which is made from a phoenix. There's like a few. You can click through the tiers. I guess maybe they're all interchangeable, potentially. Uh, but either way, at the very least, the Flugel Tiara does require the Gaia spirits here, which would mean we have to fight the Gaia, uh, which I think we're a little ways away from right now. But if we can get uh, the ring of the, uh, the Shulker, I think that would make our ability to kind of fly around a lot easier. So let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's look at the, uh, the altar here. So the altar is a little pricey. It requires two solarium ingots. These are made uh, in the old alloy smelter with soul sand and gold. That's fairly easy stuff. We need two manulin, which is an alloy of cobalt and ardite, both of which are ores uh, that we should be able to find in the nether. And then we also need a block of silver, a block of quartz, and a block of surface quartz. Again, all of which are ores that should be fairly easy to find. The animated torch here is a redstone torch plus a mana powder. Again, easy enough. And then the voodoo puppet is two clay, one leather, one string, one dead bush, and then four graves dust. I think we've made almost everything here apart from the graves dust. Uh, the graves dust is a little awkward. It doesn't tell you in JEI how to make it, uh, but you get it as a, uh, a small percentage drop chance from killing undead mobs. And in our case, we're going to do zombie pigmen because that's what we have access to over in the, uh, in the nether. So we've got 134 out of 180 looting. We also have haste and diamond, and we have one modifier left. 
I'm going to grab some Lapis. I'm going to try and bump us up to uh, 180 on the looting here. That should still leave us with one modifier. So long as we don't go above 180. Like that. That gives us luck two. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, try and go for luck three. We could also, though, if we wanted to, chat, put some Nether Quartz on here. The Nether Quartz would increase our attack damage and thus make it a little easier for us to kill mobs. Let me do a quick slash back and see how good this thing is against Zombie Pikmin. It's okay. It's a two-hit kill, which is less than ideal. I think in an ideal world, we'd want um, our, our sword to be a one-hit kill. Especially with them coming at us so fast. <laughs> like, if this was a one-hit kill here, I think we could kill these guys fairly easily. Yeah, and no, I was afraid of that. We are going to have to kill, I think, a fair few of them to get... Oh, no. To Oh, well, there we go. And to get um, the Grave Dust. Because it's not a super common drop. Looting only uses one modifier. Oh, really? So we can bump that up to, to Looting 3 without it taking up another modifier? Interesting. Okay, so we got our first piece of, uh, of bacon there, which is good. We've yet to receive any Grave Dust, and we do need... Uh, we do need four. Yeah, I don't see any here. So you know what? Sure, chat is telling me that um, we can add the Lapis to our sword without using up another um, another modifier. We also did just unlock a new modifier for adding uh, for leveling up our tool. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that then, I guess. Let's try and get all the way up to, uh, to looting three. I don't know quite how much Lapis we have. Do we have another hundred Lapis to put on this thing? We do. It's going to put us a little low on Lapis, but I think that's fine. I don't think we need a ton of Lapis. And I actually do think that we have a little bit more Lapis in our Orchid chest. Nice. All right. Cool. And given that we did just unlock a new modifier, I am also contemplating adding some Redstone to this as well, because we do have like 300 Redstone and then again, and then again more in the, uh, the Orchid chest. So yeah, let's go for another 50 redstone, I think. Let's go take the attack speed. From 0.84 up to 0.98. Sure. Hello, my friends. We do also need to do some mining. So you know what? I'll actually grab this. Yeah, we need a block of, uh, of status quartz, which actually doesn't look like it's going to be too bad, chat. I wonder if we can... Oh, hello, my friend. You have uh, remembered me from the past. So we actually have enough. You are way too fast, my friend. The uh, the slow regeneration speed on the cleaver here is less than ideal. But that shouldn't really be a problem, actually. As long as we don't encounter too many of them. Um, but yeah, I think a block of Cedar Squats is just four Cedar Squats, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Nice. So we actually have that good to go. Um, but we also needed, I think, Silver and Nether Quartz. So where possible, let's grab... Both silver and nether quartz. Again, nether quartz, I think, is just a block that requires four nether quartz, right? So getting a block of that really shouldn't be an issue. I will make sure we have at least nine, though, just in case it is a more expensive block. And again, we already have 14. Perfect. And then the last thing was silver, I believe. Now, uh, silver ore, I think silver ore is the stuff coming out of the roof, like over there. Potentially. Let me take a quick peek around and see. We do have some up there. Oh, no, the silver ore is in the uh, the mango blocks, right? Yeah, no, I do remember seeing this. I think we have a few of these blocks at home. These guys right here, the nether silver ore. So how many silver do I get from that? If we run it through the squeezer, we can get two with a chance of getting three, which I think is definitely worth it. So um, we'd only need like five of these. And that's if we get unlucky on the doubling, because five would get us uh, 10 silver there. Yeah. All right, so that should be basically, chat, all of the blocks required there. Uh, we will grab a little bit of soul sand for the old uh, solarium. And then after that, we need to take a look around and see if we can't find some cobalt. I don't think that's cobalt. Cobalt is blue, but I don't think it's out there. We need cobalt and ardite. Now, I don't see any. Maybe it will tell us the Y level. Or maybe that is cobalt. 
Yeah, so it spawns kind of like around Y level 111. And then what about Ardite? Ardite spawns much lower down, like around Y level 5. Oh, I think I see some there. Okay, so that, that is Cobalt up there. And that is Ardite down there. So again, that shouldn't be too difficult. We only need two Manulin. And honestly, chat, once we get, if we can get a decent amount of Manulin, we could really upgrade our tool or at least some parts of our tool to be manual in, at which point we would have um, a significantly better weapon. <laughs> the gas definitely makes this uh, more tricky than it needs to be. Can I, um... Hold on, chat. Can I, like, fire the gas ball into the, the pigmen? Is that a thing I can do? And follow-up question, is that a thing that's in any way useful? It does kind of hurt them, I guess. Like, running them into the line of fire of the gas does seem to be doing at least a little bit of kind of softening damage, if nothing else. But I think I definitely would prefer the gas just not be here. All right. So we got, we got three. We got three graveyard dust chat. We only need one more. We do also have the one rotten pork. I don't think we need the rotten pork to get the rings. Oh, there we go, four, nice. So we do have some cobalt fairly close by. There's some there, and then I think there's some more like right there. So if we can just kind of build down to that, that would be grand. And also, I guess we can just dig in here actually, and then dig down. As all good Minecrafters recommend you do. Ooh, we do need a higher level pickaxe, though. Our pickaxe is currently not cobalt worthy. Okay, so people in the chat have pointed out that uh, I did make a, an obsidian pickaxe set here, which is, I guess, somewhat unnecessary. But what we can do is we can use the sharpening kit here to upgrade our pickaxe. You can see it does say there, combined with a flint, upgrade your tool to the materials mining level. So if we take this and craft it with a flint and maybe the pickaxe and possibly do all that in the actual... Uh, Tool forge? Yeah, there we go. So that takes it up to mining level cobalt without reducing our, our durability or our attack speed or our mining speed. Nice. So now we should be able to mine. Oh yeah, look at that. And it mines nice and quickly. Beautiful. Advancement made speedy boy. There was an, adva an advancement for that. I guess it was under the uh, the ores. It was. Okay, cool. So we actually don't need that much cobalt. I will take some extra here just so we have some because we might want to make um, a couple of upgrades to our tools. Like manual is, I think, basically the best, or at least one of the best materials that you can make in uh, in Tinker's Construct. And so I do think that uh, in an ideal world, we'd have some extra cobalt to make extra manual in uh, to therefore use on our uh, on our picks. All right, so this is the old Ardite. And again, we should be able to mine that fairly easily here. Uh, we do have bedrock beneath us, so we're actually fine. I do see a little bit more over there as well. There's not quite as much Ardite as there was cobalt. Uh, and again, we don't really need that much of it here. Um, but one manulin can be made from one Ardite and one cobalt. And I'm assuming we can maybe double this if we run it through the uh, the sag mill. Yeah, we totally can. So we do have essentially, uh, you know, 12 cobalt and uh, and six uh, and four Ardite here. I will grab a little bit more though while we're down here. And I assume if we were to dig like more into the, the chunk as well, we'd probably find even more Ardite. Like I assume it doesn't just spawn on the uh, on the edge. I assume that's just what we uh, what we see. Uh, there is some pyrothium there though, which is a little uh, a little dicey. Yeah, here we go. All right, so I guess what we're going to do here, chat, is we're going to put our uh, we'll start at least by putting you know one cobalt and uh, and one ardite into the old uh, sag mill here. Again, we only really need one of each, and uh, of course, as per usual, we do need to uh, fill up our culinary generator on apples here. And then while we wait for uh, for those two to, uh, you know, smelt down and, and smelt together in the alloy smelter, uh, I will, I think, go in uh, and see if we can't make, uh, start making some steel. Essentially, all we need to, all we should have to do here is grab some of the coal that's, uh, or some of the charcoal that's backed up. Nice, we've got 89 charcoal, so we'll throw that in there, and that's going to slowly but surely start making steel. Um, again, we are going to have to go in every so often and add more charcoal and take out the slag. Um, but we really only need 36. As soon as we have uh, 36, we can then, of course, upgrade it to the uh, ultimate blast furnace or the improved blast furnace and then and then ultimate from there. So um, we do need to smelt these by the looks of it. That is also fine. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we can then run those through 
the alloy smelter. And at that point, I think we're pretty much good to go, chat. Um, but we do still need some soul sand, which we currently don't have. That's fine. Um, but what we do have is the ability to make a block of nether quartz, as well as, uh, hopefully, a block of certus quartz. As well as, I believe, and let me uh, find a spot for this guy. There we go. Um, a block of silver. Yeah, let's go run the silver through the sag mill as well. Uh, we should uh, put this through the squeezer, right, if we can. Yeah, the squeezer gives us a slightly higher chance of, uh, of doubling here. And the squeezer is so much faster than the, uh, the sag mill. Oh, my goodness. I love it. All right, so that was actually very quick. Beautiful. Drop that in there. The, uh, the first... I think we get only one manual in here. I think it's a two-to-one, unfortunately. Yeah, but that's fine. We are going to get two here, which is A-OK. -okay. Uh, we should also, I think, have basically everything we need to make this uh, voodoo puppet here. Yeah, we need clay. We do need a dead bush, which uh, is made by dropping a sapling onto the drying rack. And our drying rack is uh, right about there, so we'll throw that down, I guess. For now, just look like there will do. And then we'll just throw in the old sapling. Like so. Uh, we also need a leather. Now, I think, again, the leather is drying rack territory. Actually, never mind. I was going to suggest that we go and catch a fish and use that fish, uh, cook it, and then dry it to get leather. However, we do have the alchemy catalyst, and so we should be able to just do one of those. Nice. That is significantly easier. And at that point, I think we're basically good to go on the uh, on the old puppet here. We need two clay, and then we need uh, four string. We've already got the grave dust. This is going to take a hot minute, but that's fine. I believe our mangolin should be done. It is indeed. Our silver is also almost at uh, block levels. We just need one more here. And uh, and yeah, we do need the soul sand, of course, and some clay. But I think we're good at the summon uh, for the summoning altar at that point. And then essentially, chat, if we press uh, U, we can see the recipes here. If we want to make a chicken, we need two more leather, one floral white powder, one world seed, which is grass, seeds, and a dragonstone. The dragonstone is a mana diamond uh, through the old alpine portal. I don't know how we're going to get grass. We could use this recipe here. We don't yet have overworldian matter, but people have told me that uh, we can get overworldian matter if we add... Um, a slime modifier to our pickaxe and then go mining because then occasionally slimes will spawn. Um, eventually, uh, we can get the slime data model and, and use that to get overworldian matter. That's a bit of a long way of going about it. The only other way that I could think of doing it is trying to get an enderman to pick up a block of grass and then killing that enderman. Of course, the other option is silk touch, but I don't know if there's an easy way for us to get silk touch. We could, of course, make a bookshelf and then, uh, and then try and enchant a pickaxe, but... Uh, that doesn't seem like the greatest idea. And uh, the Silk Touch, the Silky Crystal even from Tinga's Construct, uh, which does allow you to get Silk Touch, uh, requires an Emerald, which again, as of right now, we don't have access to. But yeah, other than that, we uh, we should be pretty much good to go, right? Like the rest of the chicken recipe here doesn't seem too bad. Oh yeah, of course. And other than the World Seed, we also need a, a Bucket of Blood, which I think is where our Tinker's Smeltery is going to come in. Up until now, we've not made one. Um, but I believe that if we do want to make one, we either have to make an industrial squeezer from immersive engineering, which I would prefer not to do. Uh, the much cheaper thing for us to do is to make a smeltery and then use that to melt down rotten flesh into uh, into blood, which we can then use uh, to come to make the bucket of blood and then use to make the uh, the chicken and thus get the chicken wing ring. Uh, so we should now, I think, be pretty much there. Let's see. Do we have what it takes to make this voodoo puppet? I think so. We have the leather. We should, I think, have enough fiber here to make one string. We do indeed. And then other than that, we just need two clay. I think and we're good to go. We've got the four grave dust. We've got the leather. We've got the string. We've got the dead bush. Uh, we can get the clay if we don't already have it, which I think we do. And then, yeah, we just need nothing, actually. We have it all, right? Yeah, that's everything, right? So, uh, boom and boom. All right, so we have the, uh, the voodoo puppet there. And then to make that into the summoning altar, the only things we're missing now are the block of silver, the block of quartz, both of which um, I think we do have. I think I might have put the block of quartz away over here. I did. And uh, silver-wise, we do have 12 silver ingots, uh, ingots on us. And so a block of silver, nice and easy for us there. So at that point, we just need the animated torch, which looks like it might be one of the easier crafts here. One stick, one redstone, and then, of course, one mana powder, which I think I'm, as always, going to make with uh, sugarcane. 
And then uh, we just need some Salawi Mingus, which we are, which are Soul Sand and Gold. We don't have any Soul Sand just yet, so we are going to have to head back through uh, to the Nether Chat, but that is totally fine. And at that point, we should have the Summoning Altar ready to go, and we could take a look at uh, possibly summoning uh, a chicken or two. I think we only need the one for the chicken wing ring, which I will also bookmark here. Yeah, we need a golden lasso, which is easy enough to make with one chicken inside of it. Um, and I think you do get two chickens, maybe, from the summoning altar recipe. It does say 1x chicken, 1x chicken. So I think we do get two chickens from this setup here, so we'll have a spare one, uh, which is great because it's also going to mean that we can, uh, you know, utilize that secondary chicken to get eggs and therefore get multiple more chickens uh, going forward so we don't have to repeat the summoning process uh, in the future, which is nice. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can't get chat. Some soul sand. All right, so uh, a little bit of soul sand later. We can do a quick slash home, and we can, of course, throw that into the old uh, alloy smelter here. I think we need two soul sand and two gold, and uh, we should be good to go. It is going to take a minute here because the alloy smelter is notoriously slow. Yeah, that's fine. While that's doing that, let's do a quick check up on our steel. We're getting there. Again, I will keep putting more charcoal in where possible. Uh, we have, I think, 17 steel now, so we're about halfway towards being uh, able to automate this. Yeah, we've got 17 in total. That's uh, completely fine. I will have like a little draw for silver ingots, I guess, over there. And then uh, I guess while we went for the solarium, let's look again over here. So two leather should be easy enough. One floor white powder, also easy enough. Let's start with the two leather, because that's super easy. It's two rotten flesh over in the, uh, the mana pool with the alchemy catalyst. Done. The floor white powder is also very easy, assuming we have at least one floor white petal, which we do. We have 12. Beautiful. So we'll take that and we'll grab our pestle and mortar. Do a quick one of those. And that's the white powder done as well. Now, the other two are a little bit trickier because now we also need the World Seed and the Bucket of Blood. So the Bucket of Blood, again, I don't think is really going to be that difficult for us, chat. All we need is a smell tray, and the smell tray is basically just a large amount of, uh, of sand, gravel, and clay, which now that we have automated cobblestone and a good amount of mana, I think we should be good. So let's make the summoning altar. Uh, oh, of course, we do have to throw uh, that one bit of uh, sugar cane that we made, or the one bit of sugar uh, that we made into the, uh, the mana pool, and then make that mana torch. Don't know how you missed that, but <laughs> there we go, boom. And then you, and you, that is the animated torch done. And that should be everything we need, chat, to get the summoning altar. Nice. Which I believe is reusable, which is always good. I think for now, I'll put it down, like, maybe over here. And we'll come back to that in uh, in a minute when we have what we need. So now, let's see. If we want to make a smeltery, we need a few things. We need a controller, which is just seared brick. We need a drain, which is also, you guessed it, just seared brick. We need some kind of tank which you guessed it is seared brick, but this time with glass. And then we need a bunch of seared brick, which is yet more seared brick. So we need just a ton of grout, which is gravel, sand, and clay. Gravel, now, I think is going to be easiest done in the mechanical squeezer. So you know what? Let's grab... You just stole my melon. Let's grab uh, a stack of cobblestone and throw that into the old squeezer. We'll then grab another stack of cobblestone. We'll grab two stacks, actually. We'll grab one stack and turn that directly into sand. We're then going to turn the other stack also directly into sand. We're going to put one of those stacks over here. That should get us some clay. Right now we have 64 clay, so we'll take that out. And we'll craft those up into blocks of clay. And I think at that point, chat, we're pretty much there on grout. How are you doing over here? You're doing good. Not quite as fast as the, uh, the sand and clay production, but still fine. I guess it's 13. I believe each one of these smelts into... Uh, Oh, sorry, that gets us 24. And yeah, each one smells into one seared brick. I think we might start, chat, with a fairly small smeltery. Like, normally the default is like a 3x3, three three, but I think we might start with a, maybe an even smaller, like 1x1 one one for now, until we get more sand, gravel, and clay. We can always make it bigger as we go forward. So 52 seared brick later, and we do still have a little bit more uh, smelting up here. We should now be able to uh, start crafting up a few of these things. So the controller 
is easy enough. The Durian is also easy enough. The tank is easy enough, but does require one piece of glass, which we'll go ahead and smelt up right about now. And then that's basically it, chat. We're not going to need a casting basin or a casting table or a faucet just yet because I don't plan. And actually, I'm going to let that all smell into glass just because we can make sand fairly easily and having glass going forward, I think, is going to be useful. Um, but yeah, I, the idea here is to actually get the blood out in bucket form, which I think is most easily done with a tank. So I'm going to probably end up, chat, moving the smeltery in the future. For now, though, I think we're going to do something like this. We're going to have the seared brick. We're going to have... The tank we're gonna get rid of that <laughs> we're gonna have the drain we'll have the controller and then we'll have the brick so this is kind of the smallest thing that is technically still a smeltery we can make it taller here to hold more more slots uh, by default uh, this would have held just one item now it can hold two and if we add that uh, final missing block there it should be able to hold three which is obviously uh, not a crazy large number of uh, of items but for now we don't really need a crazy large number of items i don't think all we have to do is drop you right about there. Um, but we do have to get... And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the lily at least away because, gosh dang it, <laughs> we, we don't need it. And these endermen are constantly fighting me. Um, I am going to, first of all, end this man. There we go. And then what I plan to do here, chat, is uh, we need to get some lava. Now, I don't know if I actually took my buckets out here. These are, again, a good example of things I should be carrying around with me basically at all times. Uh, let's go grab... Actually, we should have, if I'm not mistaken, a reservoir full of lava. Check your baubles. Oh, it's there. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chet. I have no idea why it's there, but what we should be able to do, Chet, is we should be able to put some lava uh, into there. Perfect. And then at that point, what we should be able to do is, uh, utilizing uh, the old hopper here, uh, we should be able to start pumping rotten flesh into that smeltery. Um, I think each piece of rotten flesh does only give you maybe like 40 millibuckets, uh, but thankfully we do have 89 rotten flesh. Yeah, you only get 40 millibuckets, and we do need 1,000 millibuckets, so it is going to take a couple of pieces of, uh, of rotten flesh here. But thankfully, the rotten flesh does melt down quite quickly. You'll see we're already at 120 millibuckets there, so really that shouldn't take uh, too, too long, I don't think. Uh, someone does also make the fair point that you can also, if you like, stand in the smeltery, and that will also uh, produce blood. But I think for now, I'm much more happy with the, uh, the system that's in place. And then I think, chat, that if we're going to get the blood out that we might need like another tank. So we now have 2.5 buckets worth. Um, someone in chat did say that we could right click the uh, the drain here. I don't think that does work, but I will try it. Yeah, and unfortunately it doesn't work. Um, however, what we can do chat is we can pull out of the drain into this, uh, this tank here, and then we can just grab the bucket from there. Nice. So that is the bucket of blood uh, taken care of. Beautiful. And uh, we'll come back to the smeltery later. We can use it for all kinds of things, including uh, the steel plates that we are going to want to make uh, if we're going to upgrade our, uh, our blast furnace. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and do one of those real quick and grab these just so that they don't uh, back up the system. Uh, that takes us up to, I think, 28. So we are getting very close to having all of the, uh, all the steel needed there, which is fantastic. Um, but now, chat. I think the only thing that we're missing in terms of getting a chicken is the world seed. The world seed requires a dragon stone, a seed, and a grass block. The uh, dragon stone is easy enough. It's a mana diamond through the alpine portal. So uh, one diamond into the mana pool and then into the old uh, portal. Nice. Seeds we already have. The hard part is going to be getting one piece of grass. So it turns out you can make this trowel here from Extra Utilities 2, which is easy enough to make. And uh, when you break grass with the trowel, uh, you do get a grass block. So I think, chat, that that should therefore be everything that we need to get going here. We need a seed. We need a grass. And what else did we need there for the, uh, for the world seed? Oh, yes, of course, the dragon stone. So dragon stone, seed, and grass block gets you the world seed. And then world seed plus two leather plus floral powder plus bucket of blood. I think is everything we need, Chet. It might be a feather as well, actually. Yes, the feather is kind of the final uh, the final item on the list there. Um, I don't know if we have a feather. It's obviously not a problem if we don't. We can make another one with um, a paper plane. So I think the paper plane, again, if memory serves me right, is something like that. You then shift-click it onto a, a crafting station or table. 
You then go five, eight, two, six, seven, five. And then you shift right click and any second now, feather, nice. All right, so chat, after much resource gathering, two leather, one floor white powder, one bucket of blood, one, let me check that real quick. Is it one over world seed? A world seed, it's two, two world seeds. And then you shift right click, I believe with a feather in the middle. The items lift up. I mean, we got one chicken. The other chicken kind of died inside of the first chicken, which is less than ideal. Uh, do we, let me check real quick if I have gold nuggets already. I do, perfect. So uh, we do need to make a lasso and a smarter man than I might have made the lasso uh, prior to uh, to the chickens so that we could, uh, you know, catch them before they died. But uh, we only need two more string here. Which uh, hopefully we can get over here. Uh, we can't, we're so close, but a bit of bone meal should push us over the edge here. I think two bone meal, I think one bone meal will probably do it. And, uh, nope, one more. There we go, that gets us string number four. Now, this might have to be done in a regular crafting table chat, because it does require experience. Oh no, it... It's perfectly fine and doable in a uh, crafting station. Nice. So the golden lasso, all we have to do here is right click on the chicken. Boom. And now you're stored within this lasso here. And then if we want to uh, go ahead and craft up the old chicken wing ring, we need two more feathers, four iron, and two resonating redstone crystals, which should not be a problem whatsoever. We should still have uh, the ender shards lying around in here. In fact, we have exactly two, which is what we need. So eight redstone plus two and the shards should get us two resonating redstone crystals. One, two, three, four, iron, and one. Is done, and two. Is done, nice. <laughs> and so finally, chat, uh, we should have everything it takes to make the chicken wing ring. Nice, and we get the lasso back as well, which is also very nice indeed. This thing does require grid power, which currently we actually don't have, um, and shouldn't really, I don't think, maybe be too difficult for us. If we want to get grid power, we do need to first get a resonator, which requires two redstone alloy ingot, so silicon and redstone, three constantin, which is nickel and copper, and then some electrum, which is gold and silver, another resonating redstone crystal, and a magma block. None of that's undoable, uh, but we are getting a bit close to the end of the uh, segment here, chat, so I think we're going to have to push that to the next stream. What we can do now, though, before we wrap up today's levitated segment, is we can finally tear down this blast furnace here, now, if we're going to get this upgraded, what we're going to have to do is uh, a few things. We're going to have to upgrade our smell tray. And by upgrade, I mean craft up a, uh, a basin. And by a basin, I, of course, mean a table, like so. And uh, that's going to allow us to pull out uh, steel plates. So we're going to get rid of you and get rid of you. We're going to put this down here, given, uh, and then we should be able to actually craft up a, a faucet as well. Like so. Now, if we want to get a plate cast, we do need like an initial plate. And I guess we're going to use the copper plate that we might have lying, uh, lying around from earlier. Do we still have one spare copper plate? I think I don't because I think all my copper plates uh, were crafted into copper wire, which is unfortunate. Um, but it is also um, easily fixable. If we grab one obsidian, put that down there, grab our plate maker, which I think is this guy, it is indeed, and then also grab some kind of redstone signal generator. What we should be able to do, once again, is uh, put this guy down, get some kind of, uh, of block, like a block of copper, place that down, give it a quick uh, kaplunk, perfect. At that point, we need two gold, the two gold is required to make a, uh, a cast, like so. We're then going to put the copper plate in like that. Uh, once the gold is melted, we should then be able to uh, to pull the gold out over the copper plate. That should create a, a copper cast. It will destroy the uh, copper plate in doing so. Uh, but what that will allow us to do from then on, chat, is grab 36 of our steel here. And actually, I mean, by, tw by 36, I mean 27. <laughs> because we only need one plate per uh, steel. And let me check. I'm pretty sure that uh, blast 
Brick. Yeah, though it, uh, we need one steel plate per one blast brick. Gets us one reinforced bla uh, blast brick. And one steel plate does only require one ingot worth. So uh, we can put all 27 ingots into the uh, the smell tray, pull those out in plate form, and then craft those up with the blast brick to make the reinforced blast brick. And then we rebuild the reinforced blast brick in the same way uh, that we built the initial blast furnace. And that should make us an improved blast furnace that we can automate. Uh, we can put the coal in automatically. We can pull the slag out automatically. And we can pull the steel out automatically uh, to allow us to basically automate the production of steel, which is going to be super useful because in the next stream, we're going to start looking at getting things like the pump jack so we can get oil, so we can get into pneumatic craft, get some plastic, and get some uh, circuit boards and get some better machines as well as hopefully get into applied energetics too. Uh, we also need to make that resonator so that we can actually use our chicken wing ring. And maybe we'll also look at getting a levitating shulker ring as well because that is going to be significantly better than the chicken wing ring which is just okay uh, for the most part uh, but there's also things like the excavator as well uh, which do require quite a bit of steel uh, but for now guys that is going to have to do it for today next time we'll come back we will uh, finish this off we'll get the plates uh, we'll craft up the better blast furnace again we'll look at getting grid power and we'll look at progressing on through uh, these quests here